most popular simulation game of all time has built a home for itself on the PlayStation 2 Computer Entertainment System. The Sims 2 for the PlayStation 2 offers all the features of the PC version, plus a lot more. The Sims is essentially a toolbox, a people simulator in a toolbox. So it allows you to use this toolbox to play out fantasies that you might have about alternate versions of yourself or to play God in a very small and uh, believable universe. We want to give players the access to all these simulated people that have personalities, have their own goals and aspirations, and then you get to figure out what kind of stories you want to tell with them. This is a very fresh and exciting version that offers all of the, the features that you've had before, and in addition to that, we've got all new content. The team at Electronic Arts makes it all possible by providing story mode and free play mode, and you might get a roommate. We wanted to give the players a chance to tell their own stories. That's one of the unique benefits of The Sims in general as an experience. We actually have 12 story locations, meaning we've preset them with characters, 60 NPCs who live there. They have their own storylines. Most of them have their own aspirations as well, as you as a player have to help them accomplish their aspirations to also achieve yours. And then you have free play mode, where you have four empty lots, they start at ground zero, and you, we give you a kind of a seed money if you go and build your own house from scratch. First time ever with the PS2, you can play split screen two player. Two characters living in the same house, completely autonomous, completely controlled by another player, but we can work together, we can work against each other. And that whole two player aspect is brand new, it's something I think people are going to just go crazy for in The Sims 2. It becomes a case of what do you want to do with your life? Customize your character using the wants and fears and aspirations features. Each character has an aspiration that you choose at the start of the game, in addition to your personality. And then once you start, basically the game programmatically decides goals for you, and these are distributed as wants. So if you pull up one side panel in the game, you can see the gold want, which is basically the next step in the story. But you can stop between these gold wants as long as you want, so we hope that's sort of struck that balance between the question of what am I meant to do in this game, and still allowing people to, to play it any way they like. We specifically re-engineered it for console for PS2, so people looked at it and said, oh, that's what a motive is, or a need. That's what a want and fear means an aspiration. Motives are basically the minute-to-minute -minute goals, and then wants are kind of the moment-to-moment -moment goals, and aspirations the long-term goal. In the previous versions of The Sims, it was always pointing and clicking and queuing up events. Now there's direct control. This basically means you can take your character and directly control them moving around the world and interacting with objects and other characters. But really we wanted to give you that get in there, grab a hold of these guys and actually drive them around. A true feeling of that kind of god mode gameplay you get from a Sims experience. The world you've created starts spinning faster when you master toggling between classic and direct control. And it's really fun. If I take a character, switch to classic control, which is moving a cursor around the world, then I can say go and do this, then that, then that, then that. Then I can switch back to another character and take direct control of that character and go around the world. So we've seen a lot of cool complex strategies come out of that, which has been really rewarding. This is so natural. This is so easy how The Sims should be played on the PS2. It's driving my character around, running up to an object, playing with the objects, getting to turn things on and off, giving them different ways to play a game that has all the simulation. It's not scripted, meaning this world lives and breathes. It reacts to how you treat it. It's also a world of fun objects that do fantastic and fanciful things. So we have 350 objects in the game that have actually all been built from scratch. These are just cool objects that you get told about early in the game, and then you have to figure out what it's going to take to unlock them. So the game just gets more and more interesting the further you play into it. If you aspire to be creative, there are new outlets to let your genius flow in the realms of food and fashion. We also have a new creativity aspiration that players can access, which basically means they can now create their own recipes through the uh, food system, and they can create their own fashions through the wardrobe. To unlock those, you have to play through the game, meet the characters who have a certain fashion. Like, if I like your outfit, I'll say, hey, I want to meet you, get a friendship with you, and now I can actually get your clothes, so I can change my character to dress like yours. In The Sims before, you could create sort of generic meals. In our game, you can not only go to the fridge and access a whole suite of options that are in there already to create food with special effects, but you can also buy and build objects in the world like uh, uh, fruit trees and vegetable gardens. And if you harvest these objects, you can get new special ingredients to take back and create really unique recipes. Much of your time in The Sims 2 is spent socializing with other characters. The folks at EA have invented a new way to meet and greet. I really love the new social game that we added for console. When two characters get next to each other, the camera zooms in and you have complete control, kind of like a director of a scene, you know, watching these two talk. So you're the director, the designer, the builder, and the storyteller. The beauty of this game is that you can balance all these roles to create a great big universe of fun. The Sims is about poking at the environment and getting unusual reactions. It isn't this predictable, staid, slow-paced game. The real secret of The Sims is players come in, they can create their own character, get into this world and you have all these people who live there and have experiences, they have histories, they have personalities, and how they interact with each other, you start telling your own stories with those other characters. There's a tendency in trying to bond a story-based game with a simulator for it to be schizophrenic, for the game to come out and sort of feel not like one focused, unified whole. We've integrated all of these features and laid them out in a fashion that is, that is very accessible to players and 
we haven't broken that core toy box mentality either. There's nothing else like it on console. They make a game where you can go in there and make some weird alien with a purple mohawk, completely customize this world, go make friends, fall in love with three other people. There's nothing else like that. There's no other game in the world that you can do that with except The Sims. originated back in February of 2000. So when we launched, we quickly became one of the fastest selling PC titles of all time. It's a world where I customize it, I make the people, I decorate the houses, I put all the objects in the houses how I might want it and that sort of thing. So it's sort of an extension of my storytelling and what I want to do with the game. If someone who has never played The Sims before picks up the PSP version of this game and the game teaches them how to play and the important thing is at the same time they're going to have fun learning how to play the game. You start the game and you choose male or female. You can choose skin tone, you can choose face shape, and then you get to choose their different outfits. So it's a completely customizable world as far as your sim goes with over a thousand different options. So you're definitely gonna be able to customize your house. You can totally decorate and change the walls and floors and, and move all the objects around, sell them all and put all new objects. But it's totally open and a replayable environment. We've got a number of new locations and exploring the world of Strangetown will unlock in the course of the game 22 locations. We decided to take the characters from The Sims 2 and Strangetown and bring them into the PSP and expand on their story a bit. There's aliens in this town, what is this story? What's going to unfold? Well, the whole baseline for playing through the whole game on Sims 2 PSP is to uncover over a hundred different secrets. There's also some, some really fancy objects. Um, in this game you've got um, uh, perks, which are new items that kind of give you the upper hand in social situations. The PSP enables you to take it on the go, and being on the go means you want to play fast. Well, how do you play fast? Well, direct control. You take your sim, you no longer wait for your sim to move from point A to point B on their own. You actually directly control your sim from one place to the other. The analog stick directly controls your sim. Um, you're going to get a behind-the-back view like you'd be used to with an adventure game, and you can directly control your sim and send them where you want to. The nature of being a handheld device is people want to be able to pick it up, play it for five minutes, and put it back in their backpack. We've got five mini-games uh, that you can jump into at any point and have a great deal of fun with it. There's, uh, there's a hoedown mini-game where actually you can brush up on your country line dancing. As well as a really fun um, uh, smack a ghoul, where uh, unfortunately we've got a neighborhood that was built on an old cemetery, and of course they left some things behind. Now, the other thing that we're doing is multiplayer, and that's all wireless on the PSP. I can take your sim and download your sim into my game. And we can hang out, we can date, I can make you a roommate, I can kick you out, I can be mean to you. <laughs> All those things that you can do with other NPCs, I can now do with your sim. And you can play um, the mini games online head to head with friends who have Sims 2 and PSP as well. Being on PSP, it's this cool, sexy little device, and then seeing Sims 2 on it, 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 it shows up so beautiful. It's really thrilling to us to, to see just how lovely it works. There's a lot of things to do. There's mini games. There's, a, there's just little things that you can get a good 15-minute experience, or you can have a good two-hour experience. This is a title that you're going to be able to pick up that's got an awesome storyline to it. And whether you know The Sims or you don't know The Sims, you're going to be able to pick up this game, and it's going to be an awesome experience.